All right, thanks everyone for being here. Uh, so my name is Scott Pereira, I'm from Ivy Wave Solutions. Some of you might have uh, heard about us, for some of you know. Uh, we're not a water bottle company. Uh, we actually are a Canadian-based software company that uh, develops a software for uh, technology agnostic indoor wireless design. And Keith gave me two time slots. So this morning I'm just gonna talk to you about some things that we're seeing on the market with regards to Wi-Fi and cellular. And then this afternoon, I'll give you guys a sneak peek of our uh, solution that we have uh, for planning. So jumping right into it, usually I'm attending seller conferences. So we've been primarily focused on the seller side. And it's interesting, there's kind of like two separate clans. Uh, when I go to those conferences, they're somewhat bashing the Wi-Fi side. And when I come here, I, I sometimes feel like they're bashing the seller guys. I I'm kind of neutral, we're Canadian, we're in the middle, and we're peaceful. <laughs> So please don't do that. And what I think is maybe a little bit to do with the perception. Initially, when I started working, uh, I was working for a big carrier in Canada called Bell Mobility. And we were working in the cellular space. But I didn't start designing outdoor towers. I happened to join Bell right when it was starting to become important for users to use their phones inside buildings. And very often, I would arrive at places and they had no uh, voice coverage inside. So Wi-Fi was used for data, and we had the cell phones for uh, voice. And why is that important? So why are users indoors? Well, I'd like to go back to Canada, where, where we're from. And if, you, if you've been to Canada in the winter, we have super sub-zero uh, winter. So we'll go down to minus 30 for about a month and a half, two months, and you'll never see anyone on their phone outside. So there was kind of a big importance back in the day to provide voice coverage seamlessly inside buildings. Fast forward to today, and users' devices and usage patterns have changed. If we look at the way uh, a venue is designed today, we have the Wi-Fi guys that typically come in, do their wireless design to provide coverage, and then at some point, the seller guys come in, different camp, sometimes within the same company. So believe it or not, at Bell Mobility, where I was working, same company, but we had a completely separate team just doing the Wi-Fi. And what we realized over time is, well, we're designing the same venue, it's the same end users, and today, it's even the same devices. All of you here have smartphone, all your, your phones are supporting both Wi-Fi and cellular. So that said, we started to see that, okay, the designers are still in, in two separate worlds, but there could be some efficiencies if we work together. And to kind of show that, I also wanted to put on a scale just to show you guys a little bit the evolution of wireless protocol from Wi-Fi and cellular. If we look at Wi-Fi and cellular, well, one thing that's similar on both of them is that every two to three years, they kind of go through a new enhancement. And there's new protocols, the quality of, of the the service or the protocol gets better, the complexity to design it becomes a little bit more complex. And so the true, that's true on, on both worlds. Uh, the one thing that's interesting is in the seller world, we, we seem to update and upgrade those projects more often. Whereas in the Wi-Fi world, if you look at the venue here, I think everyone was talking about, they had a Wi-Fi network that was designed and kind of they walked away and they just left it there. It's still somewhat working and nobody ever upgraded. Um, the other observation that I've been seeing coming more from the seller side is that cellular, when I joined, was all about voice, providing voice coverage and Wi-Fi was data. But if you look at the commercials, at least in North America and in other parts of the world that I've been, there's a huge focus on data, high-speed data on cellular, LTE, the next, the next greatest thing. Whereas Wi-Fi, the latest buzz right now is voice. Everybody's announcing that they're doing voice over Wi-Fi and you have big names, uh, the, the mobile carriers, Google getting into the space, uh, Boingo getting into <laughs> providing voice coverage. So it's almost like we have two technologies and slowly they're starting to converge in regards to the applications that we do and uh, where they're being deployed. The other thing I wanted to bring out was the process that we follow when we do a design. So I'm not sure how familiar everyone is on the seller side, but when I was doing in-building projects for seller, we kind of followed a little bit the same type of life cycle for those different venues there. So a project really gets kicked off by doing a survey and having some KPI definitions that we want to achieve. After that, there's the 3D modeling phase. 
So I, I know that uh, this is becoming more and more popular on, on the Wi-Fi side to do predictive survey. So you have to take in your floor plans, your AutoCADs, model the walls, assign attenuations and all that. From there, you can do a kind of dimension and plan and a detailed design. After that comes the point where you deploy, optimize and commission. And on that optimization, you're probably going to want to do a post survey, validate that your predictions make sense, validate that your data is good so you can use forward. And then in both cases, there's one step that many designers usually forget or leave out is the operation and maintenance. Once we walk out of a design, so take this venue here, the person came, they deployed a Wi-Fi network, and they walked away. Well, fast forward a couple of years later, Wi-Fi is not that great, and there's kind of nobody really in, in charge. So the operation and maintenance of that is going to become more important as the applications that we pass uh, over to Wi-Fi or the seller um, continue to increase. So I just wanted to extract and, see, and show that there are some similarities in the design life cycle that you would do for both of those things. So I have three minutes left. Uh, with regards to people talking about HetNet and heterogeneous networks, everyone is talking about seamless between Wi-Fi and cellular. What are some of the things that we're seeing? Well, like I mentioned, already at the device level, the majority of devices are supporting both protocol, license and unlicensed. Uh, more and more smartphone, well, more and more tablets, smartphones, I, I think all smartphones already support both. On the hardware side, one thing that's pretty interesting, I don't know if you guys caught, but even the hardware vendors that have been traditionally, so I just put two excerpts there, Cisco, that to me, Cisco Wi-Fi, it, it's kind of, that, that was their, their bread and butter. They invested over a quarter of a billion dollars to acquire a company out of the UK to get into the license spectrum. On the other side, Ericsson, which is traditionally base station and all about cellular, they actually acquired a company uh, that was based out of Ottawa in Canada to, do, to add Wi-Fi to their portfolio. So we're seeing convergence on the device. We're seeing convergence on the hardware. Uh, users, I like to think of my mother, she knows nothing about wireless. It's just she wants to go on her Facebook, she wants to post pictures. So for them, it has to remain seamless. Venue owners, same thing. For the venue owners, can you imagine if you were designing a building and during that design process, you, approach, you had to approach two plumbers, one plumber for the hot water, one plumber for the cold water. Well, this is kind of the analogy that I use with Wi-Fi and cellular today. You have a building owner where he gets a team of Wi-Fi folks coming in. Okay, we're going to deploy the network. We're going to tear up all the, the ceiling tiles, run cable, everything. And then after that come the seller guys. We're going to do the whole same process again. We're going to sign two real estate agreements. We're going to have two construction crews, two secure. So there's a lot of inefficiencies. And in the end, what, what, I still, what, what I'm observing is that the design teams still today remain separate, but we're slowly seeing a, a, a migration. Uh, and this is good. So those of you that watch Seinfeld, worlds are starting to collide. And we're starting to see more and more uh, users that are on the Wi-Fi side, colleagues of mine that are starting to take interest in the cellular space. And honestly, it's pretty easy if you've done Wi-Fi design to design a, a cellular DAS. I know it sounds complex, but trust me, it's pretty straightforward. Once you have a good concept for RF, you could easily learn this. And the other side, I have a lot of folks that I've personally certified in, in the DAS or cellular space that are now starting to get their CWNA and starting to go down that track to get certified in Wi-Fi. So it's an interesting uh, time, I would say. That said, I'm not saying that overnight everyone is going to like learn those skills and start designing either one. But I'll show you an example of how one of our customers is working. So IBWave has a, a cloud collaboration platform where we can store designs and exchange designs between teams. So this company actually has their Wi-Fi team, which still works in silo independently, but they're leveraging our collaboration platform to be able to check, OK, did the seller guys design this project? If they did, all the walls are modeled, the floors are created, everything scaled. I can overlay my Wi-Fi and see the delta between both. Or vice versa, the seller guys start off a project, and then they check, OK, have the Wi-Fi guys been there? So I'm not implying that you would do 
Wi-Fi and cellular on the same infrastructure, but within the same building, you would have one design where you can visualize one and the other and hand off between both. And this is something that I know a lot of people are shocked when I say that in the cellular world, like, oh, what did you just say? Uh, but I've tried it myself, it doesn't work, at least not with the technology that exists today to overlay both on the same infrastructure, it's different design principles. Um, so, takeaway, going forward, what I see is happening and what I predict is going to continue, we're going to start seeing more and more cross-functional teams. So, people that have diverse skills, both in Wi-Fi planning and cellular planning. We're going to break this segregated design practice that exists today. Uh, in the end, it's RF, and you're working in such close frequencies. Uh, the seller is working in 1900, Wi-Fi 2.45 gig. One, once you have a concept of that, I think we can do it. Over here, we're going to start seeing one wireless design for a venue. Again, I'm not implying you're going to see one infrastructure supporting everything, but one design where you can toggle and see, well, this is my Wi-Fi coverage, this is my cellular coverage, and so having that in one tool uh, would obviously be very efficient. And collaboration. So the people that remain at the hotel after a venue gets designed, there's got to be someone technical that can evaluate what was designed, where are the access points, be able to do a quick spot check. And right now, in many cases, when I talk with people, they have a, a PDF copy of a design, if they're lucky, and they don't really know what's installed. So having tools that we can also feed to the people that inherit those, those networks once they're done is going to be uh, something we see. So that's pretty much my, my 10. I'm, I think I'm over. Um, just before, though, uh, if you guys give me 30 seconds, one other analogy that I like to do, because the new trend now, everyone's talking about LTU and, and Wi-Fi. Well, I tried to look at my personal life. And uh, anyway, maybe it doesn't make sense for everyone. But so a couple of years ago, I got married. And back then, it was just the wife and I. Uh, great. We could sleep in. We didn't have to worry about schedule. Uh, very, very flexible. Then we had our little boy. So my long-term evolution, unlicensed. Very scary, didn't know what was going to do, and uh, changed, sorry, it's a bit emotional. <laughs> uh, changed a bit our life, and all of you that have kids probably uh, know that. And in the end, we found a way to work together. So uh, I think same thing will happen uh, with Wi-Fi and LTE, and we'll, we'll see what it comes. Cool, thank you. Thank you.